Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and once again, um, computer layouts have changed. Yeah, I know, it seems like these change about, change about once a month, if not, <laughs> if not less. Um, formerly in this spot, as you know, was the um, Gateway 2000 P590. Um, this is my bedroom, by the way. This computer um, that you're seeing now is the Packard Bell Legend 204 CD, which is where the Gateway 2000 P590 once stood. But I was wanting to change things up by putting the gateway out in the office because, you know, I really, really love that computer a lot. Um, it's the closest I've ever had to my aunt's um, Gateway 2000, and if you're wondering why I don't ask her for that computer back, it's simply because she still uses it, and I'm glad she still uses it. Um, it's just it's nice to have someone in the family who I can um, relate to on old computers and old computer games, so I'm glad that after 23 years of having that computer, she still likes to use it every now and then. But anyway, I digress. This computer um, is the Legend 204 CD. I um, got this computer back in February of this year from a fellow YouTube friend here. I actually had to drive and pick it up from him in person and it was totally worth it. He gave me this computer along with the iMac G3 that we saw in a recent video a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'm very grateful to have this. Um, specs of this computer ha it has a 66 megahertz Intel 486 DX2. Originally had a um, well as far as hard drive is concerned I'm not sure because the hard drive that was in here was not original. I think it was like a 400 some megabyte drive but it currently has a 3 gigabyte hard drive but of course since this is um, MS-DOS we're dealing with it's only using 2 gigs of that. I'm using a 3 gig in here because it's the um, best hard drive I had for it at the time and it gets the job done. It originally had 8 megabytes of RAM it still has 8 megabytes of RAM. It has a dual speed CD-ROM drive and it originally shipped with MS-DOS 6.2 and Windows for Workgroups 3.11, which it's still currently running. And um, I even have a Packard Bell monitor on top of it, and you got to admit, this is a very classy looking setup. <laughs> Bring the tripod in a little bit closer. You can see it's got a um, nice size monitor here, a 15 inch monitor there. And it fits absolutely snug right here, um, which is perfect because this hutch on this desk is very, very low. And so having a um, computer set up like this with a um, old-fashioned desktop style with the um, CRT on top is kind of difficult to do on this desk. But this computer, um, the size of it is the perfect size. Now if it were something like the... Uh, Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme or the Corner Packard Bell, which is um, the same form factor but a little bit taller. This setup would not work unless I used an LCD monitor on top. <laughs> so I'm glad that this fits snugly and it looks absolutely um, beautiful. And that's the very original keyboard that came with this computer. I've hardly ever had a chance to use it until now, but it works just fine. It's what you expect from a Packard Bell keyboard. They're good little keyboards for what they are. So, um, let me set the camera up in a um, good position and we'll um, take a look at it. Alright, that's fired up. Um, I'll Once we get into the operating system, I'll reposition the camera so we can get a better look at the screen itself. Turn the monitor on, and turn the computer on. Takes a little while to get a video signal. Having to use Easy BIOS, which is um, some disk overlay software to get the full 3 gigs out of this hard drive. Of course, again, I'm only using 2 gigs of it. 
Anyway, um, we're at the MS DOS 6.2 startup menu that my friend the Flying Scotsman here on YouTube configured for me, which gives me, um, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, um, we, we can go straight into Windows, we can go to DOS Gaming with CD-ROM support, DOS Gaming with no CD-ROM support, minimal DOS setup with mouse support, and just minimal DOS setup with just hardly anything at all. So for now, um, let's just boot straight into Windows. This computer, by the way, was manufactured in March of 1995, making it one of the oldest Packard Bells I've ever owned. Now, I, I have this computer set up for networking, but I currently don't have an Ethernet cable going into the back of it, so Windows is going to take a little bit longer than usual to start, and it's going to um, pitch a fit when it discovers there's no Internet connection. Again, I'll um, have to connect an Ethernet cable up to, to, to it to completely resolve that, but I just haven't had the time to do that yet. Okay, um, the DHCP client was unable to obtain an IP network address, so we'll just tell it no for no more messages, even though um, that's not going to do much good. It's my custom wallpaper. And there it is complaining about the network again. And here's the Windows 3.1 program manager that we all love so well. So um, now that we're in the OS, let me reposition the camera so we can get a better look at the monitor. Okay, um, hope that looks a little bit better for you guys. Um, as usual, I'm running plug-in for Windows to give the Windows 3.1 program manager um, a bit more features. Gives us features like um, a clock up here, a uh, drive space monitor, and um, nested program groups with custom icons. So um, I can demonstrate that by going into the games directory. And while normally all these um, game directories right here will be um, all in this one program manager window, I'm able to organize it better and have each. Um, group and nested group right here so um, one benefit of that is as you know um, Windows 3.1's program manager um, has a a program group an icon limit I forget what it is but eventually um, you'll run out of um, allotted space but with the um, nested program group feature of plug-in for Windows you don't have to worry about that as much so we've got our um, sound card utilities there from Packard Bell. I've got um, Internet Explorer 5 on here, I believe it is. And I would demonstrate that, but like I mentioned, I don't have an Ethernet cable connected to it at the moment. I actually did do a video um, showing this computer on the Internet this past summer, if you want to check that out. Got um, Paint Shop Pro 3, Adobe Acrobat 2, the um, Packard Bell bundled uh, multimedia applications. Um, this computer um, being from the late 1994, early 1995 era came with the older Packard Bell software pack that we're used to seeing on computers like the Legend 822. So on this computer you get all the um, knowledge adventure games such as 3D Human Body, Kids Zoo, um, Space Adventure, Really cool stuff right there. Um, it's a shame I missed out on that when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, oh, there we are. And we get the pack more Packard Bell stuff right here, including um, Navigator and Workspace. The Packard Bell um, FM radio software, as you may recall, I installed a FM radio card into this computer. Um, several months ago and it's still in here I just didn't move the uh, FM antenna out here yet since I moved this computer out here to the bedroom uh, Netscape Navigator um, 4.07 I believe uh, the main group some Microsoft applications including Works 3 and Microsoft Bob the uh, Windows accessories like Paintbrush 
I'm such a good artist, aren't I? Um, games, which we saw a while ago, and we'll be playing one or two of in a little bit. Um, Prodigy. Of what good that does these days. Huh? What's going on here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, the joys of Windows 3.1. It's so quirky. And Faxworks. Now, first thing I want to show, um, this Prodigy icon um, reminded me of something. This comes with a um, Prodigy demo. Now, I've shown the one on um, newer Packard Bells um, running Windows 95, but on these older ones, this comes with a much older Prodigy demo. This one dating from 1991. The Prodigy service is easy for your whole family to use. Just plug your phone line into the modem. The Prodigy software is already installed on your computer. If you haven't guessed already, there's no sound on this demo. I guess this computer would have come with a Prodigy quick start guide. Oh yeah, get your weather and sports. Unfortunately, I missed out on Prodigy. Um, when we first got our computer back in 1995, um, we signed up for America Online instead. Of course, it did come with Prodigy, but we didn't use it. I know a lot of people that did, though. Not sure how long this one goes. <laughs> I don't know if I've gone through the whole thing before or not. And access your bulletin board system. I've only had this computer in the bedroom for about a day now. But like I said, I really like it here. It looks very, very nice. Looks almost original from 1995. Are we done yet? I would like to explore the world of Prodigy now, but unfortunately we are currently living in the year 2018 where Prodigy is a little bit hard to come by now. Okay, we'll exit that. <laughs> that was fun. A um, little look at early 90s internet. Okay, um, we'll go into our navigator. Welcome to Packard Bell's Navigator. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. Now this is obviously a much older version of Packard Bell Navigator than what we're used to seeing. This is version 2.0 from 1994. We're used to seeing 3.x from 1995 and 1996. And this one's a lot more basic than what we're used to seeing. Um, you just get four buttons that take us straight to like stuff like software. But you can also click this bottom on the button on the bottom left get it to get a more interesting view. This is a 3D hallway view, which is always cool to see. Go to workspace. Unfortunately, this was made before there was a 3D workspace. And we got our software room. Uh, 
Got our entertainment pack here, including um, good old fashioned ski free. Utilities. Got our clock settings there. Okay, we're frozen. There we go. Again, Windows 3.1 can be quirky at times, but that's why we love it. <laughs> and we got our um, kid space, which is more or less the same kid space we're used to from newer versions of Navigator. Hello and welcome to Kid Space. This is the fun place to work and play. Yeah, fun. I don't know why, but I've always loved the way this old um, Windows right icon looked with the um, pen and the letter A. Oh yeah, this was um, this was made before we um, were able to hear stuff like that is not a toy. So, yeah, that's Navigator, a lot more basic than um, what we remember from later versions. We do have this. I don't know if it requires a CD or not. Welcome to Getting Started. A quick tour of the features of your Packard Bell computer. Just press the right arrow key to start. That is the most 90s woman haircut ever. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Packard Bell. So yes, this also does have a mouse lesson, but it's not as um, feature rich as the um, later version we all know and love. In fact, that was just it. A letter from Packard Bell. Dear customer, um, we are very excited that you chose a Packard Bell computer and would like to welcome you to the Packard Bell family of satisfied owners. Hmm. Yeah. And no, I'm not going to register because um, it'll be a little hard these days. And this is just going to show how Navigator works. So enough of that. Alrighty, I guess we can um, fire up a game or two. What do you want to play today? Um, I always want to try something um, that we usually don't see on this channel much. Let's see what's in Maxis. I'll play a little bit of Sim Tower. How about that? Um, yeah, so apparently our display driver doesn't support this game, but it will play anyway. You hear that hard drive going crazy? <laughs> Yeah, this is a, keep in mind, this is a 486 system with no cash, so um, it's going to be a little bit choppy at times. As you recall, I grew up on a 100 megahertz Pentium, so I was a little bit more privileged in, um, when it came to CPU power. Now, as much as I enjoy this game, I have never been good at it. I always run out of money and can never get money back. So, yeah. <laughs> Build some offices there. A couple more. And an elevator. Okay, we'll do it like that. <laughs> Look 
expend our lobby there. A little more offices. Okay, and then let's build a condo or two. there. Build a couple more condos. Do we freeze? Okay, like I said, Windows 3.1 can be a little bit quirky at times. I'm seriously repeating myself on it. <laughs> Now, I'm doing pretty okay right now, but if we um, continue on this game for the next 20 minutes or so, this tower will probably be out of business. Oh, great. Someone's at the door. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Um, someone had to uh, have directions to the nearest um, bathroom facility. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> Build some more offices. Okay. Expand our lobby again. Add some more offices. Still doing somewhat okay, I guess. Uh, probably need some more elevators. down on that a little bit. some more condos. Probably not a good idea putting an office there, to be honest. Let's speed it up. You know, I'm starting to get kind of bored. <laughs> All right. You know what? I think now's a good time to quit while we're ahead. <laughs> But that Sim Tower for you, not a bad game at all. So, um, let's find one more game to play within Windows 3.1. Let's see what do we have in the Sierra directory. Okay, I found a game. It's one that um, I used to play all the time with my aunt back in the day on her um, gateway and our Packard Bell here at home. A little game known as Myst, probably one of the most famous computer games from the 90s ever.
Uh, what do you mean you can't find the CD-ROM? What's going on here? Again, I should really test this stuff off camera before doing it on camera. Well, I can guarantee you it's in there. Keep in mind, this is a recorded CD, recorded at the fastest speed possible, and this is just an, a mere um, dual-speed CD-ROM drive from 1995. You're clunking away in that drive. I may consider putting a faster drive in there at some point, so stuff like this doesn't happen again. Okay, did I break it? <laughs> Wouldn't really surprise me. Yeah, mist isn't gonna happen. Sorry, folks. Okay, here's something that we have seen on the channel before, but I know will work. Um, 3D Ultra Pinball from Sierra. The best pinball game I've ever played. Of course, I'm a little bit biased because it was the first pinball game I ever played. But since this CD is not recorded, it will probably be okay. Now, I've never played this... Uh, you, what's going on here? Okay, the CD drive is there. Uh, I wonder if we have a problem with our CD-ROM drive. So I'm putting disc in it, and it's acting like it's empty. So we might not be playing anything CD-ROM based tonight. Which really annoys me. Because I know this drive was working um, just a couple months ago. So I guess I will be upgrading this drive whether I want to or not. So, yeah, um... I think when it comes to Windows 3.1 games in this video, Sim Tower is as far as we're going to get. So, without further ado, let's just drop into DOS and play some games there. Because most of those don't require a CD. And a little message Jay put in there for me. <laughs> okay, go into our games directory. I want to play one game, but for some reason, some computers it just won't it just won't play. Um, I'll either get a message saying um, sound card error, or it'll just completely freeze the system up. But we're gonna find out if it'll work on here or not, since nothing else has worked tonight. <laughs> Hocus Pocus, a great little platformer from 1994, and looks like it is gonna work. Always a classic logo there. Joystick over here. Some good ad lib music in here as well. Like I said, this game, it'll either work or not work. But thankfully, this time it does work. I like this game because it's simple, yet fun. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with the um, CD drive. It sees it. it. sees it just fine, but when I put a disc in it, it acts like nothing's in there. I should probably test it in DOS, though, just to make sure. But yeah, it looks like I'll probably be putting a faster drive in here, whether I want to or not and hopefully have it ready to go in time for my Christmas videos come December. If you don't know already, um, I will be doing um, Christmas videos this year, but they will not be called Nostalgic Christmas anymore. They'll just be called Nostalgia Mall Christmas, 
And instead of 25 videos in December, it's just going to be 12 videos from December 13th to December 25th because my life is a lot busier now. And plus, you know, quality over quantity. So, yeah, hope you um, stick around and see um, Nostalgia Mall Christmas this year. I think you'll enjoy it. said so this computer was built in March of 1995 and at that time I don't think I even knew what a computer was my aunt didn't even have her gateway until May of that year so nobody um, I knew had a computer in March of 95 when this was built hard to believe in 1995 before I first found out what a computer actually was I thought a computer was just this giant science fiction robot that would kill people <laughs> and not a home computer with fun computer games and productivity. Uh, who knows what the CIA is building right now that could come true someday. level of this and then we'll go to something else. So yeah, as you can imagine with this being a um, 66 megahertz 486, this is a great little computer for DOS gaming. So I know 486s are usually the, the preferred basis for a um, DOS gaming computer and I can see why. It's perfect speed, it's not too fast and not too slow. One um, modification I had to make to this computer to make it fully functional when I got it, it had a dead CMOS battery, but um, unlike uh, modern computers, it didn't have a replaceable coin cell in it. It did have a coin cell, but it was no longer taking a charge, and it was soldered to the motherboard. So um, what I had to do was I had to uh, cut the battery out of the system. It wasn't leaking. Um, these little coin cell batteries usually don't, but it's best to get rid of them anyway. And I connected a um, external Tataram battery to the um, computer. And ever since then, it's worked beautifully. It's funny the. Um, Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT and all the other Packard Bells I've used with the PB600 motherboard that those computers have. It also has a soldered on coin cell battery, but for some reason I've never I've never dealt with one that's been dead. After all these years, they still run perfectly. I do not know what's going on. I don't know if the battery contains unicorn blood or something. <laughs> But, of course, I'm not complaining. And if they do ever die, which they probably will someday, probably soon, they, they also have an external battery connector so I can modify it with an external one like I did with this computer. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's a good way to lose your health in a game. Walk through fire with no power up. <laughs>
last crystal we need to get. Okay, let's head on to another game. Let's see if we can play about maybe at least one more game. Okay, here's a game that we tried to play on the Carolina Flyer um, recently, but wasn't able to. Hopefully, with this being a more old fashioned style 486, it'll run better this time. A little game called Tyrion from Epic Mega Games. Do a uh, one player arcade. And it does have mouse support, which is really cool. And there is music, but it's just kind of quiet. You got a proton, you, you naughty boy. A little bit choppy being a 486, but it runs very well though. Okay, I'm about to blow up, aren't I? <laughs> Never played this game too much, so I'm still kind of learning the ropes. Not sure what that did. But this is one of those good old fashioned top down shooters. I've always liked them because they're simple, yet fun. Multi-cannon. Approaching enemy platforms, okay. It is nice to have this computer um, on its own dedicated desk, really gives it a nice aesthetic. It's slowing down a little bit there, but nothing I can't handle. Kind of reminds me of that Flying Tigers game that we've played on this channel before. Thank you, random bl British woman. Spikes! And wasn't that the dog from Rugrats? Hard to blow up. I don't even know if you can blow them. Oh, what's that thing? Oh, yeah. Can we kill him? Almost there. Well, he killed us instead. <laughs> but we eventually got him. 
level completed. So yeah, Tyrion. Alright, that's the um, Packer Bell Legend 204 CD. Great little computer, I must say, especially now that it has its own dedicated disc. has a really nice aesthetic going for it, and yes, it is right next to the Packer Bell Legend 822 CDT, so got a miniature row of Packard Bells going on here, which is really nice. And of course, it's nice to actually own a 486, um, something I've, believe it or not, not owned a lot of in my life. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Until then, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.